Antonio Hondo here from Love This City TV. We're at the Tattoo Show Toronto. These guys have over 800,000 fans. People are into tattoos. It's hot, it's sexy. And this is the man, the artist, Bob, that gets it done. Tell me about your career and about everything about tattoos. Uh, well, I've been tattooing 20 years. It's my 20th anniversary this year. I was like 34 years old when I started, so I started a little late, but better late than never, you know? Right. Best thing I ever did. I travel a lot. I do conventions all over the world. I live in Detroit. I'm from Detroit, and I live in L.A. as well. I kind of split my time, go back and forth, and then travel all over the world doing conventions. I specialize in black and gray, uh, photorealism, portraits. And then I do a lot of horror, custom horror imagery as well. Okay, I'm a horror so, fan. Movies got oh, cool. Yeah, movies. yeah, for sure, man. So, you know, a lot of people want to know, because in this day and age, we want to know all about the artists. Like, how does it start when you're drawing? Are you drawing for that tattoo? Is it more like sketch drawing? And then you're like, okay, now I got the drawing down pad. Okay, tattooing, that is going to take place. Like, how does it all go in that realm? Um, for me, like, last several years I um, when I do portraits I'm just making a stencil from the photograph so there's really no drawing it's just outlining the the portrait you know and then put that stencil on the skin and then you shade it by looking at the picture and stuff so there's really no prep time just making the stencil of the the portrait um, so tell me a little bit more then like what makes you so passionate about it how do you even like handle doing like 12 13 16 hour days on it what, what's the fatigue that it takes to be a tattoo artist it's, it does beat you up, you know, especially the older you get. A lot of tattooers have back problems. Mine's been, the last few years, I've been having lower back problems. You know, nothing, not bad, but it's there. But when I finish a tattoo, I feel like I just laid bricks all day or something. It's, you know, it's hard on your back, your eyes, your brain, you know. And especially doing a portrait because you're looking at the picture through the whole thing. So there's a lot of concentration going on. And uh, it's just mentally draining, you know. Um, so on a positive note then, what inspires you? How did you continue to do this? Is it, are you usually giving them the art piece or they're coming in, here's, here's kind of what I want. You're just incredible at like copying that on as a tattoo. Like how does that all go? Where, what inspires you about it? You know, I just, I, I love doing portraits. You know, I always did before I was tattooing even just drawing, you know, people's faces, you know. Um, so I just, any photographs of somebody, it's, I'm going to have fun with, you know, if, whether it's somebody's kid or mother, father. Celebrity portraits are more fun, you know, actors or musicians, you know, I play guitar, so tattooing guitarists is a lot of fun for me. But, you know, if it's a really good fo quality photograph, you know, that's what I always look for. And then it's, it's going to be fun, you know. And then on the other hand, when I do like horror imagery and stuff, a lot of people come to me and just say, do whatever you want, just something creepy, you really? know, so which I've, myself, I've done that with artists. You know, that I'm a fan of. I'm like, just I love their style and anything they draw on me. As long as it's creepy, I'm gonna love it. Well, you know? What's your definition of creepy? Is it the spiders, the murder killing, the blood, the gruesome? Like, what, what's creepy in your you eyes? Know, just, I, I do a lot of skulls, you know. I do a lot of monster skulls, a lot of zombies, actually. So just stuff like that. You know, in horror movie portraits are probably my favorite thing to do because it's a portrait and it's horror, so it's kind of the best of both worlds. What has been the craziest tattoo story you got? I tattooed this 18-year-old kid, I remember. He was feeling lightheaded, so I stopped, which happens quite a bit with, especially people getting their first tattoo, their, you know, their anxiety and stuff. I made him sit there until he felt better, and then I let him go to the bathroom. He was in there for like 10 minutes, so I go and knock on the door, hey, you okay? He's like, yeah, I'll be right out. So he comes out, sat down, and I finished the tattoo. So after he left, I go in the bathroom. It's a really small bathroom, and there was puke, like, on all four walls, all over the toilet, all over the trash can next to the toilet. It's like he purposely like projectile Just vomited. In a 360 degree radius. Yeah. Tell me about like some of the celebrities you've done or who inspires you currently still in this industry. You know, I've met a lot of uh, musicians through tattooing. Kerry King and Gary Holt from Slayer and Gary's in Exodus as well. Exodus, I used to ride around with them on tour. They would let me come out for a week or 10 days and there's always a spare bunk in the bus and they let me play with them too. Like I played with them on stage like six times, get up and play one song, you know. So that's, I've been a fan of them since the 80s, you know. So I started tattooing them, became friends with them and then to play with them, it's like, you know, that never would have happened if I wasn't tattooing, you know. Yeah. Um, and Kid Rock, you know, I'm from Detroit. So I did the eagle on his back and tattooed his whole band. A couple guys from Tesla, Death Angel, Hell Yeah, just a bunch of bands. So who are some of like the top guys that are like, you know what, they inspired me how they tattoo, or who are the top guys to look at this day and age in the industry? 
There's so many now. Like when I started, there was kind of like a handful of black and gray portrait tattooers in the world, and I, I kind of got lumped into that after a few years. And there's probably, you could probably name like eight people around the world that did black and gray portraits who were kind of known for it. Now there's hundreds and hundreds. And even the last five, 10 years, it's blown up. It's so crazy. The, 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 artists that are getting into it like more like, like probably kids who went to art school and stuff like that there's more of um, like true artists getting into the the field you know and so that's the level went from here to like here you so know the bar is hard to it's like competitive now really competitive and um, just just every day almost every day I'll, I'll come across somebody I never heard of it, it, and it's like the best tattoo I've ever seen in my life you know <laughs> and it's really that crazy that's awesome and it's it's getting better like you wouldn't really think tattooing could really, the technical part of it could get that much better because skin's got its limitations, you know. Is it the gear also, the needles and, and all the tools you guys are using, they're getting like supremely like detailed? Yeah, it a lot th that's there? not making the quality of work better, but it's, it, it, it's, making thing, it's making things easier for us. Machines and the, the needles or cartridges, you can pop in and out of these rotary machines. Um, it's making things a lot more convenient for us as tattooers. It's really just the level of artistry that has uh, has made. So how do you look for the right tattoo people? Even for me, it's been 10 years, I'm still trying to figure out what I want to do with the sleeve, and then comes what artist do I pick? Like, what's the checklist that you should, the public should know when picking an artist? Yeah, there's no excuse to get a bad tattoo these days, because there's still, a, for all the good artists out there, there's more bad artists, you know, because the more popular tattooing gets, you know, it brings in the people that shouldn't be tattooing, because they could yeah. look at it as a way to make a quick buck, you know. And then there's a, a zillion amazing tattooers in every city and every part of the world. So you just do your research, go online, and um, you can type in, you know, tattooers in Beijing, China, or wherever you're looking, you know, whatever city you're in. And yeah, just uh, do your research, you know, ask around and stuff. There's tattoo magazines, so. And why do you think people get tattoos in closing? Is it something to reflect some more things have happened in their life, express themselves creatively? Why do you think people mostly get tattoos? I personally get them because I think they look cool and they have absolutely no meaning to me. Okay. Except I've got a lot, of, a lot of guitars tattooed on me, like my guitar heroes, so those have meaning. And I've got a lot of just horror, creepy horror stuff all over me and it's, um, I'm just a fan of Paul Booth, the artist who did you know, my whole upper body and stuff. And, and all, I have a lot, tons of different artists on my legs. I'm a, I'm a collector as well, you know. I'm just a fan of their work and that's why it's special to me. But a lot of people do get you know, the tattoo of their you know, mother or father that passed away. Obviously, that's got a, a lot of meaning, you know, and and people do get a lot of, you know, just anything, maybe whatever the career they're in, they get something that represents that. So I'd say more people get tattoos because it has some kind of meaning, you know, where, and then some people just walk into a shop and back in the day, people just come in and pick something off the wall. Yeah, I'll get that, you know, and they, they just want a tattoo. Yeah. Because like tattoos look cool. Wire. That yeah. was like big in my time. I yeah. think every single person got that. I can't tell you how many barbed wire armbands You've I've done, done back in the day when I started, the late 90s. That was like yeah. the start of tattoos, I think. That was like the original. And tribal armbands as well, you know. And then there was the classic tribal combined with barbed wire armband, yeah. which is like... It's like the next level. They're like, wait, let's get creative now. Yeah, yeah. Most shops these days are, have become more custom shops, so they, they don't have flash on the walls. Flash is, you know, sheets of tattoo designs. You walk into a shop and there's tattoo designs all over the walls. That's called flash. But that's kind of going away. It's kind of a dying art, because I used to draw a lot of that and sell a lot of that, you know, 15 years ago. But um, now it's like um, people are going more custom. They're, they're getting more custom work. They're not getting some generic thing. No, that's that, what I was saying. So what would you do in that situation? You would draw it out for the client the day before? Because I've been seeing a lot of the other tattoo people we've met in interview. They're like, have a week or two and they'll draw out the yeah. concept. Do you do I'd a say lot of that? more people than not, well, yeah, they'll actually draw it out on paper for the client, make sure they're happy with it. Sometimes I'll draw it on paper, but if they say do whatever you want, sometimes I'll just freehand and I'll draw with a pen right on the skin. I did that yesterday. And um, that's great. That's I, I just did a real right creepy demon cyclops thing, you know? and. And he's, I've done a lot of work on this guy, Brent, and I've done creepy skulls with tentacles and stuff. And so he'll, whatever I draw, he's, he's, he's going to like, you know. That's so, awesome. That's an easy client. So it's, yeah, it's fun, man. So tell, last but not least, where do they find you on social media and how can they book an appointment and find you? Uh, my website is bobtyrell.com. Instagram, it's just Bob Tyrell. Facebook, Bob Tyrell. <laughs> um, Twitter. 
I think it's Boob Tyrell. That's Bob with two O's on Twitter. And uh, but you can the best way to book an appointment is to actually go to my website and um, email me. And if you don't hear back from me, you could email me again. Don't feel bad about bothering me because I'm really bad with email. You know. Um, but yeah, it's, it's I can definitely book you an appointment. Just keep on me. <laughs> there you go. You heard it live. Tattoo Show Toronto. We'll be right back.